Hello best learners, this is Mustafa here at Learn With Best and we've got an amazing video for you today. We're going to be going over Robert Greene's 48 Laws of Power, Law number 17, Keep Others in Suspended Terror by Cultivating an Air of Unpredictability. First I'm going to define this law for you and then we'll look at a story about psychological warfare in a match of chess. And then we'll finish with how you can implement this law into your own life for obtaining maximum power. <laughs> Here's the law. Humans are creatures of habit with an insatiable need to see familiarity in other people's actions. Your predictability gives them a sense of control. So turn the tables. Be deliberately unpredictable. Behavior that seems to have no consistency or purpose will keep people off balance and they will wear themselves out trying to explain your moves. So one of the greatest chess matches ever played was a battle between Bobby Fischer and Boris Spassky. Boris was the superior player because he could see a hundred moves ahead. He had an uncanny ability to study and predict what his opponent would do because he would meticulously study his opponent's past games. Bobby knew that he would lose if he went in and played with the skill set that he already had so he decided that he would use psychological warfare on the unassuming poor little Boris. Bobby fabricated problems with all things. Prize money was too little. The way in which it would be distributed was unfair. He had issues with the location of the match, he didn't like the lighting, and he hated the chair that he would have to sit in. After weeks and weeks of negotiations, Bobby finally agreed to play the match. On the day of the official introductions, Bobby arrived very late and then he was late again to the first game. Time for the first match of the tournament. The first game sets the tone for the rest of the games and so Bobby purposefully made a horrible move, completely noobish move and out of character. He threw the game and Boris won the first match. Then for the second match, Bobby didn't even show up, forfeiting the match by default. Now at this point, everyone believed that Bobby had lost his nerve and that he was going to lose the whole thing. He was two games down and Boris was clearly the superior player. No one had ever recovered from a two game loss right off the bat. So in the third game, Bobby showed up with a crazy look in his eye. Boris smelled a trap, but he couldn't quite figure out what the trap was and before Boris knew it, Bobby had checkmated him. Bobby's new and uncharacteristic moves had unnerved his opponent. So then in the fourth game, Bobby continued pulling out moves that no one had ever seen from him before. Moves that were completely out of his ordinary playstyle. And now Boris was the one making blunders. And after losing the sixth game, Boris started to cry like a little girl. After the eighth game, Boris thought that Bobby was hypnotizing him and he decided not to look Bobby in the eye. But he lost anyways. Then, after the 14th game, Boris called a conference and announced that an attempt was being made to control his mind. He thought the orange juice was drugged. Boris went public accusing Bobby's team of putting something in the chairs that were altering his mind. The chairs were taken apart and x-rayed, but nothing unusual was found. Maybe just a few quarters. Boris finally resigned and never recovered from this embarrassing defeat. In previous games between these two foes, Bobby had never defeated Boris because Boris had a great ability to read his opponent's strategy and use it against him. Boris was patient, building attacks that would defeat in not 7 moves but 70. He could see much further ahead than Bobby and he never lost control. Boris played to the opponent's predictability. He defeated you at your own game. Bobby finally understood that this was one of the keys to all of the success that Boris was enjoying. Chess contains the concentrated essence of life. First, because in order to win, you have to be patient and far-seeing. And second, because the game is built upon patterns, whole sequences of moves that have been played before and will be played again with slight alterations. 
The opponent analyzes the patterns you are displaying and uses them to try and foresee your moves. So then allowing him nothing predictable to base his strategy on gives you an overwhelming advantage. In chess, as in life, when people cannot figure out what you're doing, they're kept in a state of suspended terror, waiting, uncertain, and confused. Cultivating an air of unpredictability will grant you immense power. Now let's analyze this law further and see how we can use it to our benefit. But before we do that, I need your help with YouTube's algorithm. Please smash that thumbs up button below, because if you don't, then YouTube is simply not going to show this video to anyone else, and that would be a crime shame. Please also subscribe and click on that bell icon, because if you don't, then again, YouTube won't let you know when a new video is uploaded. Your engagement with this video really does help me out a lot. And if you want to transform yourself from a lamb to a lion, then check out my course pinned in the top comment below. I will teach you the tools that you need for success, but you have to be the one to actually step up and put in the work on yourself. This course is absolutely not for everyone because the majority of the population are sheep, but for those very few of us who want to walk the path of a lion, this is the course for you. Okay, so back to the video. Us humans, right? We are intelligent animals, and it is this intelligence that sets us apart from every other species to have ever walked the face of the earth. However, most people are sheeple, and sheeple do not realize the fact that we are intelligent. The fact that we can set a vision of our future selves and plan accordingly to realize that vision. And just like other animals, we eat, we sleep, we go to relieve ourselves. <laughs> We love to follow a routine because it's comfortable, just like all animals, and yet we have this uncanny ability to consciously alter our routines, alter our movements, do something completely unpredictable, something out of the ordinary. A bear cannot decide that one day he wants to parachute out of an airplane, right? A dolphin cannot learn to send himself to Mars. Why is it then that most humans are all so eager to follow the herd? Why do I have to go to a traditional university taking out loans to pay for an education that I likely do not even need, only to graduate and get a job putting shackles on my own wrists so then I can use that job to pay my college loans, pay for my car, pay for my mortgage, pay for useless things that I don't need just to keep up with the sheeple joneses. To be unpredictable is to think outside of the box. Every time a new year comes around, everyone is eager to state their goals. I want a better body. I'm going to go to the gym every day. I want to make more money at my job. I'm going to get that girl of my dreams. I'm going to travel the world. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. But you know what, apart from just making those bold statements on New Year's Eve, are you really setting those goals in stone? Did you write those goals down on paper? Did you break those goals down into small, digestible chunks for daily execution? What are you going to do when you don't feel like going to the gym? Are you going to watch the new season of Stranger Things? Or are you going to be a pro and go to the gym anyways, even though you don't feel like it? So understand, dear viewer, that this is one of the most important laws to grasp and to use it in your arsenal of laws. Yes, you can definitely use it to throw other people off balance, but if you use it against yourself, you will be amazed at all of the things that you can accomplish because it will help you break out of the sheep mentality. I challenge you, dear viewer, just try it for one day to see how you can surprise yourself. Write down on a piece of paper five small things that you want to accomplish that will take 15 minutes or less. And as you accomplish each one of those things, check it off your list. If you're feeling bold, then try it again the next day and the next and the next until you get comfortable. Then make a real goal for yourself and break it down into bite-sized tasks that you can accomplish every day you will see results. The only question is, are you going to put in the work on yourself in order to improve your life according to your vision of success? Even when that animalistic nature tempts you to stay in your normal everyday average routine. And again, if you're interested in this idea, then check out my course 
it will change your life for the better many times over. If you like my YouTube content and you want to support me, then please check out my Patreon link pinned in the top comment below. I upload new videos every Friday for my Patreon subscribers that go deeper into my own life regarding the 48 laws of power. These videos are a bit more raw and untamed than my usual videos here on YouTube. And if you're a patron of mine already, then I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart because it's people like you that truly make all of this possible. I hope you enjoyed this animated video on Robert Greene's 48 laws of power, law number 17 keep others in suspended terror, cultivate an air of unpredictability. And remember, as I always say, you only retain about 10% of what you learn the first time around. So watch this video through a few times and then come back to it again and again in order to really understand and ingrain all of the material into your mind. Thanks and I'll see you in the next one.